Hello, hello and welcome to a Kooky Corner of YouTube where today we're going to be making a chicken card. <laughs> and this is said chicken. Uh, it's something you could do um, for Easter, something you could do for somebody's birthday. It could just be a just because chicken, just because you like chickens. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take you through step by step. We're going to, it's going to be a bit of a longer video maybe today because I'm not going to try and cut out too much of what you see obviously when it's a longer thing like going around here for the blanket stitch I will be um, maybe speeding that up a little bit so that you don't have to sit and watch me ramble uh, but yeah chicken card today and I hope you're going to enjoy it okay so the first thing I did was to sketch out an idea of what I wanted my piece to look like Sometimes I don't do this. <laughs> Sometimes I just go in and whatever comes into my mind goes down. But I did want to plan this one out a little bit. And so to that end, I sketched out my little chicken that I'm going to do there and kind of the dimensions that I needed. And that's kind of accurate to the size of the finished piece. I decided that this little chicken was going to be needle felted um but it could be that you don't have needle felting needles that's absolutely fine you could do this in many different ways so you could do your chicken um a piece of felt a piece of material um failing all that you could actually still do it in card and it would still work you just have to stick it on with some kind of a glue instead of obviously felting or stitching it in but it would work so there are many different ways you can do this, which is why I kind of kept it simple so that um, it's achievable for anybody to do. Alternatively, you can make the whole thing in paper and card. Um, again, that's something that you could do. And if you've got uh, children you want to do this crap with as well, this would be an ideal one for them to join in with. Uh, you could do your stitch so they could do card and paper. It works for all kinds of media so if you wanted to do a watercolor one absolutely just use the design and, and make your own watercolor chicken but for my purposes i'm going to do this needle felted chicken onto some felted green blanket um, and then let's take this up a little bit so you can see so i'm going to have some sequin decorations there's going to be some little bits of felting up in the sky area I've got some button flowers, which we're just going to have some simple stitches on there. The bottom piece, the whole of this is going to be a braid of ribbon. It's got an edging, the one that I've got, so I've drawn that in. Um, but you can use anything you like. That could be a piece of material. That could be just an ordinary piece of ribbon. It could be another piece of felt um, or another material. So as I say, this is open to interpretation. And everybody can have a go, no matter no matter what uh, materials that you have to hand. So for my chicken, I'm going to needle felt it, obviously. Um, and then it's going to have some embellishing stitches. Um, kind of planned them out here on the drawing a little bit. So it's got some on its chest. It's going to have some that go around the edges just to define it a little bit as well. A little bit on its tail. And then obviously the legs are going to be stitched as well. And yeah, that's about it. You can take this as far or as um, or not as far as you want it to go. It can be really simple. Or you could go to town and do extra embellishments, maybe around your blanket, uh, blanket, your felt piece. You could do some extra stitching. I think I might actually do like a blanket stitch around the edge of mine just to hold it together because it is a felted blanket that has been dyed. Um, the the felting has not gone as well as it would do with ordinary felting. It's it's kind of let me show you easier if I show you. It's this kind of stuff. So it has felted together. It's definitely felted together, but there are still kind of loose threads. So it's a felted blanket um, that I got from a lady called Madeline Millington, I think, many years ago. And um, 
it's been sat in my drawer and I just love this colour. This colour is awesome. It's beautiful, beautiful green. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it's just a glorious, it's not even a lime green. It's kind of a lime springy, I don't know, pea green. No, it's not pea green. It's too light for a pea green, but beautiful. Anyway, I digress. That is the base of the felt that I'm going to do. So I'm going to blanket stitch around the edges of it. So what I'm going to do now is put all my pieces together, have a look, generally see how it's going to fit, and we'll get on with making it. So here are all the supplies I've gathered together in order to make uh, my chicken card. This is the blanket. I've cut it down to like a rectangular size because that's the size I want for my card that it's going to go on. I have got the little piece of braid I mentioned on my drawing that's just going to go at the bottom for the chicken to stand on. I've got some odd threads that I had around my desk, which strangely enough, the green will match in quite nicely. Uh, I will need to get a few more because I want one that matches my chicken colour, which is going to be this. And this is going to be for his beak. And this is going to be his comb that goes on top of his head. So, yes. This is basically all you'll need, apart from the card base, <laughs> to make your needle felted stitched piece. So now I'm going to grab my felting mat and we'll start on making the chicken. So this is my small clover felting brush. You can use foam felt, whatever you need. Um, you can make your own felting mat as well. I'll probably be going into that at one point in time because uh, I have an idea to make a larger space. I've got these two felting brushes and I've also got a sponge that I use, but I think I want to make a bigger area to work on. So that's going to be a little thing coming up soon. Um, so let's get into it. Put my piece of felt on there and we're going to start and see where my braid is going to be so I'll just lay that gently on the top I think I'm going to have it that way around just to see where my chicken's going to be it's kind of going to be quite central so pulling off a small amount to start off with we can vaguely shape it and then go to town spelting him down you can alter the shape as you go along you just vaguely want to get that chicken shape in. <laughs> A vague chicken, that's what we're going for. I'm using this uh, clover tool, which has got three needles in it. Just makes the process a little quicker. But with something this small, you could quite easily do a um, single needle. Hope, hope you're close enough to see what I'm doing there. Let me just fix this in point as well so that you can actually see. See if that will help. So I'm getting my chicken shape, so that's his head, tail, and the rest of his body. It's kind of like a, a comma on its side, but a big fat comma. Or maybe half-eaten Jaffa cake, <laughs> something like that. I don't know if you have Jaffa cakes in the US. They're rather yummy. They're kind of like a mix between a cake and a biscuit. And there's a big debate about whether it was a cake or a biscuit. And it has a lemony, uh, sorry, an orangey filling. You can get lemon ones now as well, just to be confusing. Um, with chocolate on top, rather lovely. Okay, so we have got our chicken shape. And how quick was that? That's super quick, wasn't it? Just trying to make sure I've got that head shape. I might need to add a little bit more in. So if you find areas of your shape that are kind of missing, I've got some little more blobs to add in. Just to make sure I've got his head completely filled in and in the shape I want it to be. And a little bit more just around this tail area here. 
just to fill in that little small gap there. It's really easy to change and if you make a mistake you can just literally pull it out and start it again. And so it's quite a forgiving, a forgiving craft to do unless you've securely felted it down. I suggest that you come just get a basis of it and then you can just play around with it. Okay, I might want a little more on the head. I'm just being fussy now. I've got some thread there. It's like a blue thread. I don't know where that's from. Picking up thread everywhere. Okay. A little bit more. Just around here. I'll forget them more of a body. Okay. So that's your chicken shape in. Brought you down a little further so that you can see the shape of that. So there we have our base, base chicken. You'll be able to tell that it's gone when you turn it over. You can see all the fibres from the chicken are through to the other side. That is well and truly felted in. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we need to give him a beak. And I've got this kind of like yellow ochre um, wool. You can see I'm using the tiniest bit. I'm just going to try and get some shape to it before I try and needle felt it in. I'm just looking to see if I've got my singular needles because that might be helpful rather than the three. You know, it's a small area. Uh, these ones I get from Heidi Feathers. This is a superb set of needles if you're in the market for some needle felting needles. Um, it's one of every one that she does, all the different sizes and varieties. And uh, Heidi Feathers is, they've also, they've got their own website. Let me take that down further so you can see, because I've got this locked. So it's HeidiFeathers.com or if you go on Etsy, they've also got an Etsy shop as well. So um I love Heidi Feathers needles. They are beautiful. They're colour coded as well. So what you'll do is paint the ends of them so you know which colour that you're using. And hopefully this one is going to be just right for the beak. I'm trying to get a beaky shape. <laughs> what is a beaky shape? This is a beaky shape. Um, If, if you want to try and shape it a little, you can kind of pull the fibres a little, but do not put it in and pull because that will just snap your needle. Um, I'm quite um, safe at the minute because I've got a pair of glasses on. <laughs> uh, but they do recommend sometimes when you're needle felting to put some kind of safety goggles on just in case of breakage. And they do fly, believe me, I've seen that happen. Let me put a little more beaky, beaky beak on there. Tiniest bit, that's all you need. So you could, if you had a very small amount of each of these awards, you could make a fair few of these cards. I know I'm kind of cutting it short for Easter, but it could be just a spring card or a birthday card even. Just making sure that that's okay for that. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay, so we have a chicken with a beak. Now he needs a little red comb to go on top of his head. Again, it's a bit like a Mohican that goes on top. <laughs> um, that might be too much, actually. As I say, you need the tiniest bits. The tiniest bits of these will go like a good way. Obviously, on my original drawing, um, the eye, I think I'm going to make that like a French knot in the black, the black thread that I've got. So that's just going to be a simple French knot, which I will go through with you. And we're going to have a little bit underneath his beak. 
as his bottle. I think that's what they call it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Coleman bottle. <laughs> I haven't actually looked at a picture of a chicken to do this either. This is all, this is all from my imagination. If you want to be more uh, accurate with your chicken, go and have a look at some pictures of chickens. I do love chickens. I have looked at a lot in the past, but I'm still kind of winging it. It's a, a whimsical chicken. <laughs> whimsical chicken life. Here we go. So uh, there we have our chicken. He's all needle felted in. And what I'm going to do now is to... Um, I'm not sure whether to do the details on him first before I start to do other bits. Probably not. I'm going to leave him like that. So what I want to do is to add in my my slow stitched um, bottom part of this that his feet are going to stand on, and also then add in the the flowers and the sequins. Just trying to think of the order to do this in. Um, maybe I will do the blanket stitch around the head, then the flowers and the sequins. <laughs> How's that for a plan? Trying to decide whether to go around the edge of this in a contrasting colour. And I think I probably will go with a nice bright yellow just to um, match in with this border. So first things first, grab a massive pin. Oh, knocked your camera. I'm so sorry. Didn't mean to knock you. <laughs> And I'm just going to pin, I hate pins, you know, I, if, I, if you've seen any of my other things, you know that I'm not a pin fan. Pull some of those threads off. Where are my scissors? I'll grab my scissors. Trim that off. And I'm going to trim this off to the edge because I'm just going to literally stitch the top end down and the rest of it is going to be included within the blanket stitch so that will be sorted for stitching down so i'm going to go and grab my yellow thread now and i'll show you how i'm going to just couch this down do i want yellow or do i want gold hmm top edge i think i'm going to do gold and then a yellow blanket stitching but you can do as i say whatever you have on hand use what you have i always say this don't buy anything specially this is supposed to be a nice simple thing that doesn't cost you a great deal of money so don't worry if you haven't got the exact things i've got here i, I very i think many very few people would have this exact braid so you just use what you have um so I'm going to go and grab my other threads and then I will get my needle threaded up ready to stitch this on. Okay, so I'm back. I'm going to take this lock off here just simply because I'm going to be lifting the piece up and I don't want it to go blurry. So let's just take that up a little bit further. So I've got my needle threaded with my gold thread. Don't worry if you haven't got gold thread. As I say, do what I use whatever you have this one is my favorite metallic thread metallic thread is notorious for being awkward it it shreds it knots um, so i always suggest using a short length don't try and get a long length even if you've got a lot of gold metallic to stitch don't don't get a load of this off at once because it just goes to heck this is a better one it doesn't um, cause me as many problems as most of the other metallic threads out there so I recommend this one it's a diamant by DMC they do it in lots of different metallic colors or at least the ones that I've got I've got silver copper bronze and gold I think um, okay so without further ado I have, a, I have a knot in the end of there no I do not have a knot I do have a knot now. No, I don't have a knot. Come on. There we go. Make sure you've got a knot in there. That's good. So simply start inside your braiding or whatever fabric you've got down there. And we're just going to over sew. Excuse my hands. They've gone really dry when I've been away because uh, I've been using sanitizer an awful lot. <laughs> I think it's just dried my hands out crazily. Um, and my nails have suffered also. 
sadly, and broken off. Ha! Huh. Sanitizer. You protect us, but you damage us. <laughs> a way as well i sanitize obviously before i eat uh, but if i'm eating sandwiches you can guarantee that i end up with a sanitizer mouthful <laughs> i suppose i sanitize the inside of my mouth i don't know anyway you can see what i'm doing i'm going in taking it into the braid a little way pulling it out again this is what I call like a poor man's blanket stitch. <laughs> I'll show you how to do the, the blanket stitch when we get to do that. This stitch I love. I use this a lot. On the front it looks great. And unlike blanket stitch, it, on the back it goes slanted. If you do a proper blanket stitch, it's, it's kind of the same all the way front and back. But this is great for something that's not going to show. So we're just going to stitch our way through the braid. I am only doing this top edge, as I said, because I'm going to blanket stitch around everything else so that will all be held in place. And this is another little thing that you can do and just sit. At the moment I've got some sunshine, which sadly you can't see because I've had to pull my blind down. <laughs> Because my desk is sat in an unusual place right in front of the window so it gets all the sun during the morning. By the time it comes to the afternoon, it's moved on a bit. Okay, so stitch all that length of that there. So I'm going to slot it through, wrap it around, tie it off. That's my knot done there. I'm going to save this bit in my pot. This is a pot of all my threads, and I've got a plan for these. So any little odds and ends that I have go in here. Well, I'm thinking of something to do with those, so watch this space. <laughs> right, so for the blanket stitch, I'm going to use this DMC Cotton Pearl. It's a 973 if you want to do colour-wise, if you want to know exactly which colour it is. So it's 973. Let me hold that still for you for a second. And... Where's my end gone? I probably threaded it through too well. Where is it? There it is. So, not too long a length again. I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry, knocking the camera again. What am I like today? I'm just going back into the swing of things, I think. So, threading. Oh. <laughs> This is the curse of the needle threading on camera. There we go. Um, if you were interested, I I tend to use these kind of needles. I don't think this is one at the minute, but the Sashiko needles, which I use a lot for slow stitching, are great for this because they've got a nice um, wide head, wide and long head, so that the thicker thread can go in them. And they're very handy for this DMC thread as well because it's the cotton pearl, which is quite a thick thread. It's not as thick as six strands of embroidery thread, but it's a perfect, a perfect thickness for what we want. Okay, I'm going to start in this corner. So I'm going to try and hide in the knot. Now, this is this is how I start. Uh, embroidery purists, don't come at me. <laughs> this is this is the way I do it. Uh, is this the way I do it? Probably is. Right. So I'm going to start in this corner. The, the thread, this braid is quite dense, so it's not going to go through as well as it should. Anyhow. Coming out a little bit further along. Let's see if I've started this off correctly. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm just going to go back in there. Realised, not thrown with my thread. Okay, now we're we're cooking with gas. There is a specific way to start off blanket stitch, which I have. 
at the moment my brain said nope forgotten how to do that but I do know how to do the actual stitch so when you've got the thread at the top there what we have to do is you kind of go in you make sure that thread is to the back and then pull it and said it's not gone to the back has it now it has it's through that loop and that's what will make your blanket stitch so through it making sure that's on the back of it pulling it gently and that will create that stitch bit that goes along the top there I've got things attached to me at the minute <laughs> let me just move this out of the way and that is how we are going to go along with the whole of this making sure that thread goes to the back I'm doing this slowly hopefully I'm doing it slowly enough so that you can see what I'm doing so thread at the back and pull it gently needle in from the front loose thread at the back and pull it gently and in and out again and try and space it as well as you can as evenly as you can should I say don't worry if your stitches get longer or shorter or it just adds to the charm that's what I'm going to say for that <laughs> so it's nothing to fret about make sure you don't pull it too tight as well and see I've got to do the loop on that one see if you forget you just go back in and do it just add it in as long as you've not pulled it too tight then all will be well and all you have to do is remember to keep your thread at the back I'll try and show you the back of this there if you can see that that's a straight stitch at the back there as it is on the front and you've just got like a line of stitching going down the edge and that's what you want I am going to go around the whole of this now you could sit and watch me and listen to me waffle on uh, <laughs> it's probably better that you just do this in your own time and then come back to me so we're going to go around here when you get to a corner actually do you know what I'll take you up to the corner and we'll do that together because it's quite easy but it's just a little bit different when you're going around the corner and make sure also that you don't run out of thread uh, you don't want too much on your needle as I said because it starts to knot another way to stop things from knotting is to run it through with um, thread heaven which is like a silicon thread treatment that you just run your thread through it or if you've got some beeswax a block of beeswax that's a great way to prime your thread to stop it from being so troublesome if you will come along <laughs> stitches being awkward that's a nice thing to do you sit I usually put a podcast on or something or um, an audio book. I'm listening to Fairy Tale by Stephen King at the minute. I'm absolutely gripped. So that's what I'm going to do now. So in the corner, you kind of come to the corner bit and you kind of go up and it does like a little diagonally, diagonally ish until you get another stitch in and then it will straighten itself out a bit. And so it's like that okay I'm going to put Stephen King on <laughs> and I'll be back and I've been around the whole of this piece okay I am back I am knocking the camera I've got threads everywhere <laughs> I thought I'd show you this this is the thread heaven you can hardly see it it's so old uh, I do believe the company stopped making this and then somebody took it over and they're now making it again I don't know the details of it I only know I've had this for a few years and it's still going strong you can see it's quite messy but what you do is do grab a piece of thread here just for the heck and literally you literally just pull it through a few times and what it does it gives it kind of a silicon coating 
This is a similar way that beeswax works. So if you've got a chunk of beeswax, that's also another way to do that. Just thought I'd show you that in case you were interested. Because uh, I know a lot of people worry about getting their thread tangled and that does help. Okay, so here is chicken. Um, he has been blanket stitched all the way around the edge, all the way around to there. I can take that pin out now, thank goodness, and that can go back into my pin cushion. So the next thing I'm going to do is to, I think, add in the stitches around his body. So I've grabbed out, this is an anchor, it's the same as the DMC, it's just a different company. So it's just grabbed out a random brown thread that I have. It's exactly the same thickness. It's probably a little more matte maybe than the DMC. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but again, I'm going to grab my thread heaven. Now that I've got it out, might as well use it a couple of times just to coat it. Move back on and we're back to threading that thread again. <laughs> ah, it played nicely this time. So for this chicken, what I'm going to do is just define the edges of him. So I'll start at his tail. And I'm just going to do a very small back stitch around my chicken. You don't have to do this, by the way. This is just one of my additional extras, but it's also quite nice as well. Just adds a little bit of extra, extra definition into your chick. In <laughs> not a chick, is he? Chick could be a different thing altogether, and also something you could do as well. If you want to do your own Easter chick in the same method. Um, absolutely, change it up a bit. Yeah, all the way around. I'm really enjoying my Stephen King audiobook, I have to say. I'm not, I don't know how far actually I am into it, but oh, the way that the, um, the descriptions that Stephen King give for everything, you can almost feel like you're there. And the person who's narrating, Actually, Stephen King is narrating part of it himself, but the, the guy who's doing the narrating is spot on. Um, I sometimes have a problem with narrators. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just me listening to people and they don't sound like I imagine they would do, especially if it's a book I've already read and I've given them a voice in my head. Do you do that as well? Let me know in the comments. Do you give voices? You know, when you're reading a book, you obviously picture someone in a way and you also hear what their voice is like in your head. I know that's a weird thing to say, but that's what I do. Um, I know I'm not alone in that, but uh, it kind of phases me when, when you actually hear someone reading a book out loud, you know, as in an audio book or whatever, and they don't, they don't sound exactly like I imagined them. <sighs> the joys of being an audible, an audible subscriber. Okay, I think my stitches have got slightly bigger as I've gone around, but no, we're just going to go with it. If you can get hold of any old woven blankets, and um, sometimes they do them in thrift stores or charity stores, you can then dye them, and then in the washing machine, if you put them on a hot wash, they will felt together, which is what this is. This is that. And I've often had a fancy of um, dyeing some blanket for myself, so that might be in my future, said Mystic Meg. <laughs> okay, all around the chicken, not all around my hat, which is a Steel Eye Span song, if you're a Steel Eye Span fan. I'm throwing everything in today, aren't I? What kind of reference is going on today? It goes in the thread pot. Now, I want to do a few little stitches for his beaky. So I don't need too much of this. I'm not even going to bother with the thread head because it's a tiny little bit of thread. Still need to put a knot in it though. 
that's in there and I'm just going to define the top of his beak I think I think I'm going to go just on the top edge of his beak or will I will I go all the way around this is the decisions that you make because you're stitching sometimes you, you do something and you think mm, maybe I'll just do one thing and then you change your mind halfway through no, I'm just going to do the top edge of his beak. So maybe just round that pointy bit. <laughs> You're allowed to change your mind. It's all good. Right. I'm not going to go around the comb, but I am now going to add in some embellishment stitches where his wing is, which is where I'll need the orange thread. So fasten that off, put that in the thread box. I'm going to get a little bit of this because this is um, some straight stitching, well, back stitching, and some French knots that I will be doing. So, that's... so even though it's a small piece, you're doing quite a few different stitches in this. So it's kind of expanding on a little bit. If you've only done a little bit of embroidery, it does show you some of the different stitches that you can do in all the pieces that we'll be doing. We'll be doing all kinds of stitches. We're not going to go too crazy. So I want to do a little semicircular wing here in a back stitch. So I'm starting part way down his body. What I'll try and do as well, and I will probably put this in the description, is do a little PDF of this. Just, <laughs> just really simple PDF with a few helpful tips and hints on it that you can grab and um, have with you if you don't want to keep playing back me <laughs> on a loop to find out what does she do there what what's that I will I will happily draw out a PDF and put it somewhere that you can download it for free it's not going to be any charge on this at all and um, this bit here, this is where we're going to do the French knot. So I'm not going to tie it off. I'm just going to take it to a spot where I want my first French knot to be. Okay, let me take you down a bit. So hold your thread. Wrap it round three times. You go back in where you came out. She said, hopefully hoping this is going to work. Holding the thread still, holding the thread and let it go the last minute. And you'll get your first branch knot. I'm going to go around in a. I'm going to put four of these in. One, two, three. Wrap it round. Hold it. I hold it with my thumb there. And that just stops it from tangling before it gets to be the French knot. So we've got two French knots. The third one is going to be here. So round 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 hold it put it back in where it started and then three french knots <laughs> so like the count from sesame street ah, ah, ah. three three french knots ah one two three it's a very bad impression of the count <laughs> four french knots so we've got four french knots there so that's his um, wing area with a few French knots to um, show a little bit of definition. I am then going to take this orange thread. I'm going to do one stitch there. Take it back to the base of that stitch. One stitch there. Back to the base. Don't pull these too tight because these are just like decorative just to show his tail there and I might add just another stitch into that just to define that wing a bit more and one up there <laughs> you can add these in I'm trying to do it as I go along so there he's got a little wing now the next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of um, stitching along his tummy just to give a slight indication of feathers maybe snip that off oh sorry 
because I've got the camera so low down, my hands are struggling for a bit of space here. Snipping off some of this yellow. My microphone's decided to go up further than it should. Right. So all we're going to do here is a few running stitches just on his tummy in like a semi-circle. It's just basically for embellishment. This adds a bit of interest. That's that one. Go back the other way. So underneath that I'm going to come out away there. Um, add in some more. Oh, <laughs> catching the corner off. I've got another piece of that blue thread. Where is that from? Very strange. Pull that out. <laughs> I know what it is. It's not blue thread. It's a piece of my daughter's hair. <laughs> Yes, she does have blue hair. And yes, it's blooming lovely. Okay, and just one last row, just on the bottom of here. Lucy Air, come out. <laughs> here we go. Lucy might be in some of my videos uh, as we go along this year as well because we're going to do a few collabs together. So it's fun when we both stitch at, uh, sit at the same desk. We did this a few year, a couple of years ago and I sat at her desk and we made some clay pins <laughs> and I managed to get blue all over her desk which is a beautiful white and I got it everywhere because I am a messy worker. Lucy, not so much. She's very fastidious, but me, <laughs> slap it all over. Okay, so chicken, almost complete. So we've got the stitch that goes all the way around him, which is a back stitch. We've got a running stitch on his tummy. We've got a back stitch to show his wing and four little French knots. And then a little bit of stitching on his tail, a bit around the beak. What we're going to do now is give him an eye. And so I'm going to give him a black eye. <laughs> if I'm going to punch the chicken, don't worry, that's not going to happen. I am going to... <laughs> Where are these things coming from today? Brain, I tell you. Now, because this is a very thick, this is like a really thick, I think it's a pearl, uh, it's a um, DMC five or six, I can't remember. So it's a lot thicker. The numbers go lower the thread gets thicker yeah that's the way it goes so i'm going to come up in the area where i want his eye to be i'm going to go around once and i'm going to put it back in there and hopefully it's going to be big enough to be an eye and it is you could go around twice actually with that do i want to do i want to do it again yeah maybe <laughs> once twice let's try that he's just going to have a bit of a bulgy eye <laughs> there we go so yeah twice round to the eye is my recommendation <laughs> and now we're going to give him some legs now i'm trying to think whether i want him to have yellow legs or if i want him to just use this black thread and i think i'm going to make an executive decision and we're going to go with black you can choose yellow legs if you want to i'm going to go with black so we're going to go there. One long stitch. That gives one leg. And then another stitch there. Another stitch there. And one there. Uh, I don't know if I have a little bit of the back as well, but I'm going to put one in. Told you I've not looked at pic pictures of chickens before I did this. <laughs> I was just going in there. Now he needs another leg. And so this leg will be shorter. It's called perspective, I presume. <laughs> or just because I want it to stand on top of this 
braid. So one stitch there, or one stitch there, another stitch here, come on, and in, and the last little one at the back. There. Chicken level achieved. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we are going to do, after I've fastened this off at the back and snipped it, it's in the thread pot, might actually use that again for something. Let me take you up a little further. So my embellishments now, that's the next bit. Um, I'm going to go with these flower buttons. And try and position them around my chicken. So I'm going to go like that, I think. And then in the sky, we're going to have some sequins. In different colours. Where's that other one gone? There it is. Come here, sequin. So I've got five sequins I'm going to put in there, like that. Actually, actually, I think I'm only going to do three sequins. I'm going to take that one out, take, leave that one in, take that one out. I'm going to do a little bit of needle felting up here, I think. Just because. So let's find some thread. Actually I could use that blue thread that I was using now. That will work just to attach the buttons. So this next bit I'll probably speed up a bit because otherwise we're going to be sat here forever watching me put buttons and sequins on, listening to weird impressions of Sesame Street characters. <laughs> I don't know whether you'd want that or not. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to attach these, speed up the bit where I'm attaching them, but you, you get the general gist of it. It won't be too fast. It won't be like a blur. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like.
Okay, so chicken level achieved, background level achieved. <laughs> and now I was going to add in those extra bits of needle felting. So somewhere I have my box of odds and ends of, let's take you up a little bit. This is my box with my odds and ends in. Everything's falling down now since I found this. Um, looking at some colours. I think I would go with a little bit of that red that I used for his wattle. Mm, maybe that's too dark. I know, that's cool. I like that bit there. And I've got some blue, tiny bit of blue, that'll do. Just a couple of bits, just so I want to add in a little bit of felting wool. And what else have I got here? Keep all my odds and ends here. Yeah, blue and that kind of corally red and a little bit of this yellow, I think, will do. So tiny, tiny, tiny bits. Right down there, out of the way. Grab my felting mat back and singular needle. From there, and just add a little bit of felt blobs in. I do like my, I've got to think about circles. Definitely the circle shape is my, my shape of mandalas and things like that. So circle, actually, no, the thicker one's probably going to do better. Yeah, do it a little bit quicker. And that blue piece, let's stick that in there. Felt that in. Uh, that last little yellow piece. I'm going to put that. They look like little flowers in the background. Well, that's what I'm thinking anyway. And now the, the only thing left to do is to add the stitching on for the, the little stems of the flowers. I'm going to use this orange. I know flower stems are not orange, but I'm going surreal here. <laughs> so let me put some thread heaven on this. Take off that thread. This is how I get to have the messy desk because everything ends up on it. We've got quite a small project. We've used a fair amount of things, haven't we? <laughs> Let's get rid of the mat. So from this blue flower, I am going to, oh, would have helped if I put a knot in the end of it, wouldn't it? That helps. Um, going from underneath the button, taking it down to there. So I've got a long stitch, don't pull it too tight. And then you're going to go halfway up and just add like a little stemmy thing in it. Same with this one, the orange one. I'm going to go down a bit further into that border. Add a little shoot coming off there. And then I'm going to fasten it off because I need to move it to the other side. And I don't want it to pull, and I don't have an awful lot of thread on this needle. So knot it, and we're going to do that final stem, which is a long one. Comes down from underneath the yellow button, goes down to the top of the braiding, and we're going to add two little offshoots on this one. And that will hold down, kind of couch down that thread. So we've got a very long thread, and add a little bit of interest. Add another bit onto that one just because and there it is and now 
the next part of this well there are two ways you could do this you could put it onto a card blank make yourself a card blank and put it on there you could frame it make it into a little picture but there are plenty of ways you could use this you could use it as a you could use it as part of a, the front of a book cover but the way i'm going to use this i'm going to make a few of these and these are going to be um cards for my family at easter so there's going to be a few of these going out in different ways maybe not all in the same color so i'll probably swap around the colors a bit for different people but that's your piece easily to mount on a card in a frame on a piece of backing card and and or keep it for yourself and put it on a book journal cover and then stitch all around it that's the, the options are endless but that's me done for today i will be back obviously you've seen my video maybe you haven't seen my video of what i'm going to be showing you throughout april so there's going to be a lot of things coming up I've also got a scroller box to catch up on and many other things I've got in the pipeline. So please, please, if you've enjoyed the content, like the content, give me the thumbs, show me your thumbs. And then if you really like what I'm doing, you want to catch up with all the other things I'm going to be doing. If you subscribe and then click on the little bell and put um, notify all, every time I upload, you will get a message to say that there's a video waiting for you to watch. Have a fabulous day. Have a great, great rest of your week. I hope it's sunny where you are. If it isn't, enjoy the kind of nice, cosy feeling of not having sunshine. <laughs> I do like that as well. Anyway, bye for now.